Warning, some of the most vile and brazen parasites lurk below our waters. For those who are faint of heart, beware. This crude compilation of biological freeloaders yield enough yuck factor to repel any stomach. These parasitic pests will invade a living body, drink its blood, manipulate one's gender, and even replace vital organs with their own. In recent years, global measures such as climate change and international trading have caused several dangerous parasites to surface on land and sea in places never before seen. Fatal consequences pose a risk to any human who may encounter a diseased fish or crustacean, whether it be through contaminated water or the consumption of an infected food source. In light of what some species will do just to survive under sea level, here are 11 of the deadliest parasites to pervade our waters. And a heads up, I'm not a scientist, so I may say, no, I probably will say some of these names wrong. Number 11. Trematoda. The Trematoda are a class of foul flatworms found in the innards of lancetfish and mollusks known as sea snails. The parasitic pests are known as Batalus microporus, also the Trematoda, and are a species that infest the intestines of its victims, typically infecting two different hosts in the course of their lives. Number 10. Gluglia stefani. Next is the Gluglia stefani, a fungal parasite commonly found in flatfish species. Going straight for the gut, these guys are classified as a class of microspidorian parasite, infecting the cells of their hosts and invading organs and tissues. Results of a parasitic infection appear as a hideous and bulging growth of matter on the sides of unsuspecting ocean swimmers. Number 9. The Eye Maggot of Sprat these organisms known as the eye maggot of Sprat sound more noble landowners than they do disease-ridden parasites. As the name suggests, these vile invertebrates live in the eye of Spratfish and carry with them two egg sacs, protruding like blue appendages from the eye of the beholder. Number 8. Schistocephalus salatus the wrath of the Schistophallus salatus comes in threefold. The horrific looking hermaphroditic tapeworm inhabits three victims and is even capable of mind alteration. This parasite species first forages for copepods, tiny crustaceans that dwell on the ocean floors. These underwater creatures exist passively unaware of the dangers awaiting as they consume the parasitic larvae inhabiting like waters. Afterward, a fish ingests the copod and the downwell spiral persists. The parasite can then grow to gigantic proportions, even coming to outweigh the fish it has infested. Such an intrusion can affect the chemistry of the host's brain for behavior and immune capability are wildly disrupted. The parasite can alter the fish to behave in ways it wouldn't normally, such as making itself attractive to its own predator. While a bird may think itself lucky for an easy find, little does it know its body serves as a proverbial final destination for disease and destruction. Within a 48 hour waiting game, the worm has attacked the bird's vital organs until it can achieve reproductive maturity and produce its own eggs. Mother worm dies after such exhausting efforts, but the eggs live on through the bird's fecal matter. After they hatch in the water, the journey continues. Number 7. The Cod Worm if you felt bad for the unsuspecting copod crustacean mentioned before, don't. This form of blood-sucking parasite called the codworm is a marine copod that attaches itself to the surface of its hosts. The icky invertebrate infects two victims during the duration of its repulsive reign. First any bottom feeder such as a lump sucker or monkfish or finally a codfish. For anyone who fancies a night out on seafood, the lumptious lump sucker and its cod counterpart can certainly show up in a batch of freshly caught fish. The commonality of consumers to catch tiny wriggling worms with their store bait catch occurs far too often and the encounter is far from appetizing. Luckily, cooking of the fish will result in the larvae to die. Eating raw sushi, however, that's another story. Fortunately, uncooked delicacies such as lump fish and cod aren't found on most menus. Number 6. Spirometra irenocerinope. A fascinating and rare species, this tenacious tapeworm spends half of its existence inside amphibians and crustaceans before moving on to bigger fish, that is cats and dogs. Unfortunately for us, 
we can also become accidental hosts, where these wormy intruders can well reach maturity while living inside a host human. This particular parasite known as the S. erinciarinopi are usually imported from areas like China and violates their victims through drinking water contaminated by diseased crustaceans. Ingesting raw reptiles or frogs as a delicacy or the use of a tropical sori solution containing raw frog poultice can do the trick, yet these instances aren't so common. This tapeworm is unique from other tapeworm parasites that the uterus containing the two sections resemble horns. Once comfortable in the intestines of its host, the organism can grow up to 1.5 meters. This parasitic horror has only been reported 300 times worldwide in the last half century, with its first emergence in the UK involving the infection of a British man in 2014. After consuming frog meat in China, the man reported painful headaches and hallucinations to his doctor before severe seizures gave way to a four-month stint of memory loss. Surgery sought the removal of the pest, and the man recovered. Number 5. The Vampire Fish This should come with its own warning label. The small ear-like kangaroo can be found in the Amazon, feeding off other fish by swimming into their gills and feasting off their blood. Locals remain leery of its contact with humans, saying that the blood-sucking kangaroo can prey on people by entering any orifice, most commonly the anus, by lodging itself deep inside with backwards-facing spines. After the vampire creature becomes too bloated to retreat, it dies. Amazonians claim surgery is the only way to remove the parasite. Difficult though, when many times a kangaroo can reportedly swim up a stream of urine and lodge itself inside a man's penis. In this instance, removal is deemed highly painful and extremely difficult. Number 4. The Brain-Eating Amoeba Warm bodies of water keep the Nagleria foliae happy, as do brains. The single-celled brain-eating amoeba is known to pervade open waters and permit themselves entry into the olfactory glands of any underwater animal. The brainy amoeba will travel through nose glands responsible for the detection of odors, which send subsequent signals to the brain, gaining the parasite a free ride to the cerebrum. Once inside, infection of the brain ensues, and inflammation leads to a whole host of other neurological symptoms that render a fatality rate of 100%. In other words, the victim has no chance at survival, but not without a little in-house fun beforehand. Warning signals include air infection followed by fever, nausea, stiffness in joints, and finally incessant vomiting. Patients report the development of attention loss and extreme dizziness before lapsing into comas and then death. The brain-eating amoeba has been found in South America, Asia, Australia, United States, and the United Kingdom. Number 3. Rhizocephalin barnacles, or better yet, Seculina. Barnacles do more than adorn hard underwater surfaces in the occasional whale. This rare species of hardshell crustacean is a barnacle with the given name Seculina. Sounds appropriate, as this parasite is known to sack the womb of an unsuspected opponent and steal it for its own. Crabs are the target here, as first the parasite begins by injecting cells of its own self into the crabby crustacean with the intent to plant a series of tiny tendrils. The tendrils then attach themselves to the host and begin the game of cellular invasion along the insides of the organism. This parasitic assault aims to steal the animal's nutrients while simultaneously sliding inside a joint point to spread feeding tubes throughout the body. When Sacculina finds a female host, her reproductive system emerges where the female crab's brooch pouch would normally be. If the host crab is male, no problems there. The parasite merely manipulates hormones to make him more feminine. Male parasites then fertilize her and turn the crab into a parasite factory. The new mother crab lays the parasitic eggs and protects the offspring as if they were her own. So really, it's kind of a sweet story. Number 2. Guinea Worm Disease This one isn't so bad. The disease caused by a parasitic worm known as Dracununculus metadininus consists of the larvae of the guinea worm ingested by water fleas. If humans come into contact with untreated water containing said infected fleas, stomach acid will dissolve the intruders and release the larvae. 
Once the larva has been set free inside the host body, they will proceed to burrow themselves through the intestinal wall. Then the guinea worms will undergo maturity, with some growing up to 80 centimeters in length. If the host is particularly lucky, male and female parasites will worm their way toward each other and find a match. A love connection that will ensue in the fertilization of 3 million embryo babies. Much like the praying mantis mating game, the male dies, but not because his partner eats him, he just has no purpose anymore. Thus, the female continues to reap havoc all along the way. The host is in immense pain until a sore appears at the bottom of their foot, and the guinea worm pierces the skin and leaves what appears to be a painful blister. Due to the burning of the wound, the host will most likely submerge their foot in water, which is exactly what the witty worm wants. The fierce female proceeds to poke her head from the sore and vomit embryos from her mouth into the water. These little guys wriggle around until being consumed by another group of unsuspecting fleas, and lo and behold, the cycle of life continues. The host face weeks of slow and painful extraction in hopes the worms don't break, because if they do, a series of serious immune reactions unfold. Moral of the story, avoid unwanted fun with fleas and unfiltered water. Number 1. The Tongue Eating Lows The cheeky Simothoa exiglia is a protandric hermaphrodite parasite. In other words, a simple sex change can morph this male into a female when necessary. But first, the sneaky Simothoa, also known as the tongue eating louse, selects a host fish to enter through its gills to begin its exciting life transformation. Once matured, a new and improved female climbs back out through the gills and fastens herself to the tongue of her seemingly well-acquainted fish friend. If personal space hadn't been obtrusive before, it all becomes a tight fit now, for the lovely louse proceeds to pierce and drain the tongue of all its blood and nutrients. Consider it not to consume enough to kill the fish, the parasite proceeds to drink enough until the tongue withers and wastes away. The louse then fills the open space of its mouth and lives there, acting as a replacement for the old appendage. No worries here, out with the old and in with the new, so the adage says. The leeching louse acts as a new pseudo-tongue and parasite and fish remain in happy harmony. For a while, despite the greedy tongue-eating parasite stealing a great deal of the food caught by her host. After she tires of this new charade, she'll invoke a male to crawl inside the gills and together they'll procreate inside the host fish's mouth. Thus, babies are released and the charming circle of life continues. Fortunately for the land dwellers, this parasite affects fish only. Further, this is the only known organism that not only feeds off its host body parts, but replaces the very thing it's eaten. Bon appetit!